We are passionate here at 100 Huntley Street about partnering with Indigenous communities across Canada to foster understanding, healing and friendship. We call that initiative First People's Voices and our associate producer for that program joins me now, Crystal Lavallee, welcome. Thank you, it's good to be here. You are just back from an awesome trip to the north, the mm -hmm. north, northern of Saskatchewan. Tell me about what you're doing there. Right, so we sent, uh, it was myself, our camera guy and then Bev Hadland, our outreach ambassador. We flew into Saskatoon took an eight-hour drive north to South End, Saskatchewan, which is the south end of Reindeer Lake. Oh. And we were there collecting stories for First People's Voices. Incredible community, incredible stories that we're hoping to pump out as fast as I can get them done. It's with, um, you know, a, a dog sled racer. You know, he won the paw back in 1989. We've got a residential school survivor as well. And then a guy in the north who used to sell drugs who he invited Jesus into his life and everything changed. So those stories are coming down pretty soon. And you weren't just doing stories that we're gonna be seeing here on 100 Huntley Street, you also did some awesome food distribution to a community that was really suffering because the caribou didn't come through, they're dependent upon the caribou. Right. Which is, if you've seen prices at some of the grocery stores in the right. north, you understand a lot of people live off the land. Yes. The snow prevented the caribou from coming, so yes. you had to bring food. Right. So what happened is while we were there, Bev was there as Outreach Ambassador, and she had connected us with Tommy Bird, who um, he's one of the leaders up in the South End House of Prayer. And uh, it's also George Bird's brother. So George went up to Lac Brochet to work up there, and he discovered the needs. And he said he came back, and he said to the group at the church, he said, this is what's happening. We need to do something. So Tommy Bird put out a post on his Facebook wall, and he said people across the land began to respond, donating goods in service, uh, services in kind. They got two cows donated. Uh, another organization or a business cut and wrapped it for free. And um, churches in the in the in the city of Saskatoon were able to uh, go shopping on a little shopping spree to pack 75 75 boxes of food to send up to Lac Brochet to the elders and the single parents. And and uh, Bev Hadlin, our ambassador, is big part. Like she's really good at connecting. It's been it was individuals, it was churches, it was mm -hmm. you know different organizations. Right. It was there were so many people, too many people to name, but there were so many people that really responded to the need and to the crisis. And when you you you, you look at Lac Brochet on the map, it's a flying community on, only. And um, with that caribou that didn't go through because of a snowfall that prevented them from coming into their region, usually they would hunt the caribou, keep it for the year, and they would have food throughout the year, but they were really struggling. So this small community in South End decided, hey, Amazing. we may be small, but we can be mighty too. We can be a part of the solution. And they were able just to get all of the food supplies Perimeter Airlines sent it up there for free, and they all did this within about a month. Wow, incredible. Okay, so we you brought back uh, some comments from two community leaders in South End, Saskatchewan, who are part of this, Karen Bird and Frida Olson. Let's take a look. Well, we heard the concern in church, and George brought it up there, and so we wanted to get involved and help out, help the people out. We know how how scarce the food can be and the high cost of living, especially that way when there's no road going there. We saw the concern and we wanted to help and show our love. So $22,000 was collectively raised and donated by these organizations and individuals. So with partnership with the South End House of Prayer, Crossroads, All Nations Church, Permitter Air Cargo, and especially the leadership of the North Lansdowne First Nations. What an amazing work. And I know they want to continue that. Yes. Continue reaching out to the North. So we, we want to follow that. I just, I want to provide a really quick update too. Um, before we run out of time here, you know, we've been partnering with Bill Prankard and uh, Steve Carlton about work in the North. Mm -hmm. And this great update just came out in the National Post recently where they said that in Nunavut has the highest suicide rate in all of Canada. And since 2014, and that's coincidentally, or maybe not, when Arctic Hope was launched, it's been going down for the first time in years. Mm -hmm. Is that not incredible? Yeah, it's pretty, I think it's it's good for Bill Prankard because he's been plowing that field for a very long time, uh, you know, paying the cost of flights, going in and out of the communities, and then raising up Stephen, who's been a part of uh, sharing his testimony, his story of overcoming that sexual abuse. And he's just basically making a declaration to young people that there is hope. and young people are grabbing hold of that and they're seeing what they can actually live for. So he's actually doing a tour. Uh, he's doing his Arctic Hope tour. He starts on February the 22nd and he'll be going into every high school 
in Nineveh with a small team of people just to uh, share his story of overcoming and promoting that hope for young people. I love that. Thank you for all that you're doing. We're going to hear more stories from you, I know, as you go out on the road and bring back amazing stories of what's happening in the North. Thank you, Cheryl. Well, I know that so many of you gave when we gave that Arctic Hope Appeal. You've been praying for kids in the North. I want you to know that God hears those prayers. He is at work and we are seeing results. If you want to continue to give to keep this happening, you know, we want to see positive things. You can do that at crossroads.ca. And we so appreciate your continued prayers as we continue these amazing partnerships.